Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Senior Staff Engineer Pivotal, Mark Fisher. Good morning. So today I'll be talking about the Pivotal Function Service and specifically describing what our team has been focused on for most of 2018, which is the replatforming of RIF, the open source um, core of PFS, onto Knative, which you just heard about. So first to set the context, the Pivotal Function Service is obviously focused on the top of the levels of, of um, abstraction <clears throat> that Dave described earlier, functions. And one of the things that we notice when talking to our users and talking to our customers is that there is some confusion over where the uh, lines are drawn between these levels. So if you're building an application and you're focused on microservices, microservices can be deployed at the application level or at the function level, depending on the granularity. And so we look at that uh, primarily as the um, fact that functions are event-driven, right? But even then, that can mean a few different things. There are different categories of event-driven functions. There might be events um, from the from external systems. It could be uh, IoT sensors, and you're monitoring the, um, a particular metric, maybe to do failure detection or something like that. That's a more obvious case. Then there are enterprise applications where you're breaking down a monolith, and you're breaking it into microservices. Some of those microservices are at the granularity that they can be deployed at the function level. And usually, that's the examples where uh, it's very um, isolated functionality that is independent of the rest of the application. So something can fail, or something can be um, invoked in a, in a way that doesn't uh, trigger uh, a cascading failure to the rest of the, the parts of your application. So for example, you might have uh, an application you're building to process insurance claims, and you want to send uh, notifications on status updates. So the status update notification could be implemented as a function. Or you might have a banking application and you want to uh, provide online help with the chatbot. The chatbot needs to submit the user question to an, a cloud-based natural language processing service and then look up a result in your knowledge base. That would be an example of something that can sit alongside your enterprise application and be deployed at the function level. And then at the most extreme third category of this, I view applications like what Neha described earlier. If you're taking that approach where everything in your domain is an event, and you're building your microservices in a way that they're, they're connected to each other over uh, Kafka topics or any kind of messaging um, middleware, then that's going to give you the most opportunity to move to this highest level of abstraction with functions. OK, so last year at Spring 1 on the keynote, uh, I introduced Project Riff as our open source event-driven um, function as a service platform. And this was the slide that I showed last year. I just want to emphasize while talking about how we've replatformed onto Knative, as well as why we've replatformed onto Knative, what are the things that are the same and what things are different? And in the case where things are different, I hopefully will convince you that they are uh, different for good reasons. Um, but first, what's the same? So, we want developers to be able to fun focus on their functions, just the scope of, of function code, and the events that trigger those functions. That's the same. So when you're deploying your application, uh, the scope that you're concerned about as a developer is just the function, not the uh, underlying framework that supports it, not even REST endpoints or messaging endpoints or the configuration of those. But you really are thinking of it as implementing a callback that you're going to submit to the system. And these are the same examples that I showed last year. I'm going to use them in the demo because that same code runs on, on uh, Rift today on top of Knative. So the way that this works is that those functions are built into containers. We provide what we call invokers as the base layer. And the invokers provide a contract with the idiomatic programming model, depending on what language you're using. And that um, defines what the scope of the developer function should be. OK, so what is Knative? Um, Mark Schmarney just described it pretty well as the building blocks for creating um, uh, pl other platforms, and uh, specifically in our case, a function as a service platform. What we noticed is that the custom resource definitions that they were defining in Knative 
overlapped with what we were doing in Riff. And when Google reached out to us, uh, we decided to start exploring that overlap and prototyping uh, what it would look like if Riff were going to be replatformed on Knative. And one of the major benefits here is that Knative is actually taking a much broader view um, of, of the problem area that it's trying to solve than Riff was initially. So Riff was primarily focused on the eventing side of this, where we had a topic uh, custom resource, where it's now channel in uh, Knative. And we had the function resource, which was basically pointing to the user code and the base uh, invoker, so triggering the build part as well as the um, binding of that channel to the, um, to the function itself, which is a subscription uh, resource in, in Knative. But Knative is actually built on an architecture of a service mesh. And so that means that you have control over routing at a fine-grained level, so you can have uh, traffic policies that allow you to split across multiple revisions of your application. So the Knative configuration resource is a uh, mutable resource. But for each change in the configuration, there's an immutable revision resource created from that. And you can do um, canary deployments and rollbacks and all of those types of patterns across that. And also, because it's a service-based, uh, service mesh-based architecture, one of the slides that I'm not showing that I showed last year was our sidecar. Um, so in Rift before, we had a sidecar that was connecting to Kafka and creating uh, the stream of events for, as, as a consumer. That responsibility has now shifted into a provisioner that backs the channel. And so you can have Kafka-based uh, provisioners, which we've uh, contributed from the code that was originally in our sidecar, is now part of Knative. And there's also a Google PubSub-backed um, channel provisioner as well, which I'll be showing in my demo. <clears throat> So what this means for Riff, uh, Riff does still exist, and PFS is still built on Riff, and PFS will still run on PKS. Um, but Riff is thinner. Uh, it provides a CLI, and it provides these invokers. And we've made contributions to Knative, and we've collaborated with Google on several parts of the design and implementation in Knative so that our, uh, what we had in Riff to support eventing over topics is now supported at the level of the Knative channels. And the way that we build our containers with the invoker as the base layer for the user code is through a build template that we provide to Knative. And so with that, I'll go to a quick demo. <clears throat> OK, so at the bottom of the screen, I just have the uh, cube control output for the deployment and the pods. And you'll see at the moment, I have two. Um, two deployments. There's a correlator, which we'll get to in a moment. That's basically playing the role of the HTTP gateway that we had in Riff last year. And then there's the hello function, which I'll show you the code for that. Um, again, it's, it's the same as what you saw in the slides. But this is in a Git repo. And likewise, we have the square function in a Git repo here. OK, so what I want to do is, is show you how we can invoke this with the Riff um, command line. So I can invoke hello. And under the covers, this is using curl. I'm going to specify the, that I want a new line so it would look nice here. And then I'll pass S1P 2018. OK, so that just invoked my, my um, hello function through a Knative route. So that was just an HTTP invocation. I'm not yet using the eventing part of the uh, platform. So that's an, another area where things are, are different than they are with Riff. The functions can be deployed so that they're invocable via HTTP or uh, over channels. OK, so now let's create the, um, just to show you actually building from source. Let me clear this. So Riff function create. I'm going to use the node invoker. I'm going to call it square. And now what I need to do is provide that git repo, which is, um, let me just grab this. And the artifact, which is square.js. And the image that I want this to actually build for me. So this is going to be in my Google Cloud container registry in this project. And riff square. 
OK, so that's going to create the square function. And what you see at the bottom of the lower part of the screen is that it's, there's a pod there. That's the actual build pod. And so there's four steps in the build pod. It grabs the, the source from the Git repo, and then it creates that container with our base layer. So now that's all happening on the cluster, whereas last year it was happening on my machine locally with a Docker file. And now the square deployment is running. So I should be able to invoke that, similar to how I invoked hello. We'll just change this to square. And technically, this is JSON, or Scott Andrews will get mad at me. OK. And the result is 49. OK, so now to show what I did last year, um, I took the input from one function and routed it to the output by going in and directly editing the YAML. Now what I can do is actually create channels for those. And so the channel, <coughs> first channel I'll create is numbers. And this needs to have its provisioner, which in this case I'm using GCP PubSub. And then I will create another channel for the squares. OK. And then I will create a subscription. And the subscription is going to go from the numbers channel to the subscriber, which is square. And that's going to reply to squares. Oop. Riff subscription create, sorry. OK. And then I will create another one. This one will be uh, from square. Where's to hello to replies. And replies is another channel that already existed, and my correlator is listening on that. And so that should allow me now to invoke the correlator, which let me go back to this command. Um, so invoking the correlator on the path, which is the name of the channel, numbers. And then we will pass a header that this needs to do the correlation, which is the k native. Or sorry, this is this is telling it to actually wait for the response. Otherwise, it would return an ID that I could use to do a lookup. Okay, and then there I get my results. So that was using the new uh, k native CRDs. OK. So there are a few more sessions. Um, obviously, this was very quick. I know that we're, we're uh, running, running late here. Um, the uh, session tomorrow that I'll be doing, I'll, I'll do a much uh, deeper dive into what these actual CRDs are. Um, Dave will be presenting the developer experience for Java and Spring users of Knative and Riff. And then Scott Andrews and Eric Batard are going to go into the details of Riff itself. Um, and before you leave, there is one more thing. Everyone knows that the, uh, for any modern platform, the build process is a key element. And any users of Spring on Cloud Foundry know, in particular, that the Java build pack is essential to that experience. So to hear a bit more about how that core tech is evolving, here is Stephen Levine of Pivotal and Terrence Lee of Heroku. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>